Today is Thursday, November 6, 2014. May I please have the attendance, Dr. Entwistle? Mrs. Bealey. Here. Mr. Chiazzo. Here. Mrs. Lang. Here. Mrs. Massengill. Here. Mrs. Murphy. Here. Ms. Perry. Here. Mrs. Shea. Here. Ms. Murray. Here. Ms. Hartle. Here. Would you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And do we have any adjustments to the agenda this evening? Um, I believe the only adjustment was uh, additional appointments, 9.4 Wentworth co-curricular appointments, but I believe that you have received that prior to this evening. Yes, we did. So that should actually be on the... It's um, just not listed on the agenda. It's not, okay. No. no. All right, so that would be 9.4 on the agenda for anyone who's following along would be co-curricular for Wentworth. So then I'd look for the superintendent's report. Um, okay. Well, I guess uh, this will be uh, fairly brief. Uh, teaching and learning uh, through this first quarter of 2014-2015 um, has been going very, very well, and that's what we wanted here. Um, I thought this might be a nice opportunity to introduce you briefly to a new seminar um, series. There's, Mike, there's some of extras here if you want one and you want to share it with the other folks there. Um, there's a new seminar series that is being offered across the district this year. We are, um, we're basically, it's a custom designed uh, seminar uh, that I work with uh, Monique and with um, Kathy Terrell from the middle school and um, uh, Kelly Mullen Martin, and there's probably a couple of other folks as well who are involved. And we've customized a uh, six one hour um, session uh, seminar that happens throughout the school year, and it happens in every single uh, building. Uh, we use, utilize uh, staff time, faculty time, faculty meeting time. Like I said, it is just uh, six one hour sessions. Um, and it and it really allows our teachers and staff to get a more in-depth study, a more in-depth look, and particularly a better understanding around the application of what they find in, the, um, in Marzano's Art and Science of, of Teaching. And Art and Science, um, as you all know, and Marzano um, also is the, uh, the creator of the new uh, uh, professional evaluation and um, professional growth system that we are about to start piloting <coughs> um, a little bit later in the winter and the uh, system that is being adopted for all of um, Scarborough. I, you know, I do think it's important. Um, it, it is indeed a mandate from the state uh, that um, there be new uh, professional evaluation and or performance evaluation and professional growth plans. <coughs> Um, I, uh, I have said it earlier, but, but I do think it's worth repeating. Um, Scarborough is there at that point anyway, so even if the state were not requiring us to do this, this is important work to improve the quality of the instruction that's happening here. We have excellent staff who are very dedicated, um, but we all can improve. We all need to learn, and um, that uh, that uh, performance evaluation, professional growth system is, is excellent and uh, really does focus on that growth piece which really drives improved quality uh, instruction and basically results in, in higher um, performances um, uh, from, from students. I think um, what you see in this little, uh, little design, I guess I've given them all away now, so I'll borrow Kelly. What, what you see, um, in this introduction is really that in the same way that we have um, all of the learning focus um, very student-centered, we also have a professional learning focus that is very staff-focused. Um, um, and all of our uh, teachers, all of our uh, 
professionals, um, and e even our ed techs, our other, which are our other instructional uh, su support staff, are all targeting some very specific uh, professional learning goals. Those professional learning goals are um, guiding them and connecting them in their professional learning teams. Um, so we've evolved the professional learning teams to really be um, collegial based on similar targeted professional growth goals, mm -hmm. okay? So that not only are we working in an area of common interest around improved student outcomes, but we've started from a basis of connecting around a common professional learning goal that, that we have, maybe the four of us have, and then from there we're examining um, uh, student needs and a commonality uh, that will allow us to grow and use our PLT time as exploratory and experimental and, um, and basically classroom laboratory time that we bring back, compare our notes as colleagues um, with a real focus on improving um, our instruction and improving our overall performance um, as uh, instructional professionals. So you see that, that this little triangle here um, has the professional learning goals at the center. The PLTs, as I said, have served as a foundation for the for formulation of, of um, PLTs for 2014-15. And um, it is very much connected to the professional evaluation and professional growth system, as I said, which is Marzano's. So the, 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 um, all of that work is connected. And, and then the, the, the third piece that supports the professional learning it are those other resources, either um, instructional coaches, which take a very active role in terms of modeling, providing resources, uh, providing quality assurance in terms of the curriculum. But as well, this seminar series fits the bill um, in addition to that. So the seminar series is really allowing more additional time for staff to really dig in, really understand the Marzano <coughs> learning map, the, the, um, the design questions that Mar Marzano has based this entire performance evaluation system on, and really allows teachers to investigate, engage, and try out elements which are essentially um, a very effective research-based strategies um, that, that, are, that are proven to have um, an improved, improved um, uh, outcome in terms of student learning. So, um, so, so it's, these pieces are, you know, one, one triangle is sort of sitting out there. This, this is now creating a system of, of again, a staff-focused learning system that allows them to uh, use their professional, their PLT time to, to engage in this perfor new performance evaluation and, perf and professional growth system and as well to access the resources that we have been building, sort of building the bicycle as we go to, to, to achieve uh, the learning goals that teachers have. It's, a, it's, a, it's simple looking at it, it's fairly sophisticated and it takes a while until those pieces really come together. Um, we have just provided uh, the second uh, session in the six um, session series, uh, and that has been rolled out. Um, and, and again, we are doing a custom design. We're using the Marzano material, but, it, but it's, it's, it's actually a great learning process for the leadership council, who then is taking this back to their, their respective faculty um, groups. And, and rolling out this, this experience. So it's, um, we're getting some pretty positive feedback. George, That's my, yes. Thank you. Uh, I understood that completely, quite frankly, be, but I've been a teacher. For people who have not been in education, would you give an example, please, of just one small goal that is being addressed mm -hmm. at any level, it uh, doesn't sure. matter. Well, um, a, po a popular one, a design question that's very popular is uh, design question three. Um, and it's really a focus on helping students um, interact with new knowledge. How can I, as a teacher, um, use strategies in the classroom when I'm introducing new material to make 
to create a greater likelihood that all of the students that are receiving this new material are going to interact with it in a way that's going to be meaningful for them. And that's not, well, you think, well, well you just do it. Well, it's not quite that, that, that simple, particularly since we have, um, in any class, you would have perhaps 20 learners. And we've got several different learning styles. And, and, and we've got individualized backgrounds that every single one of those learners have. And we've got anxiety about math, or maybe no anxiety about math. So, so there's, so it's, it's, it's really, um, again, this is the science of teaching. The art is how I, how I um, make it exciting and engaging. The science is using strategies that have been proven by research that are most effective for the greatest number of students to interact with that new knowledge. Thank you for giving Thank me you. the opportunity for the the example. And Donna, you you dug into this a bit. Um, will our um, who will be run, running the six one hour pieces? Uh, the, the, the building leaders. Building leaders. Are, yeah. Okay. That's but awesome. they're very interactive. Mm -hmm. They're very interactive in terms of of teachers and ed techs really and professionals all working together. And, and oftentimes they're reforming into their PLTs as well. Mm -hmm. So the ad, are the administrators then move, working together in order to develop those lessons and make some commonality at each school? Yep, or? It, yep it's a rollout. We have a, we have a, we have a core team that's sort of custom designing. <coughs> we then take that to the leadership council. They basically go through that lesson and then they take the lesson and they bring the lesson to their school. So well, it's, a, it's a scaffolded of, approach. Yeah, and, and it's kind of analogous to our coaches because really basically you know, we're using our own people and that's a savings in money. Oh, yeah. A huge savings because we're not sending people out to big conferences that you know can be anywhere from 90 to 150 dollars a person. Or, or way more. In, yeah, mm -hmm. in, instead we're using you know, our leadership in order to train, yep. train our teachers. So. Well, like I said, it's a learning process for all of us. Mm -hmm. you, we, you know, you never know anything as well as if you have to teach it. So it, we're, we're all in that position. Okay. You have more? Nope, that was it. Okay. Thank and you. so we'll be, you know, I, we'll be uh, sharing more with you about. Thanks. Well, thank that you for that report. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right, so the chair's report. So I'm going to start off by saying that uh, Saturday, October 18th, under bright sunshine, we held the ribbon cutting ceremony for the new Wentworth School. Several hundred community members were in attendance, and after the short ceremony emceed by Principal Kelly Crosby, the ribbon was cut by retired Principal Ann Mary Dexter. Um, after the ribbon was cut, the public was invited to take a student led tour of the building. Um, I think it was an overwhelming success. Um, the student tour guides, some needed some prodding along, others just went right to it and did a fabulous job. So um, it was great to see that. So um, hopefully everybody had an opportunity to see the building. Um, I do know that community services did offer a um, group that went out today, I think it's at 9 o'clock this morning. Um, oh. with, yeah, it's the senior WOW 55 and older. So. Um, if you didn't have an opportunity, hopefully you can at some point get in when there's an event going on or something. So, um, also on that same evening, the Scarborough Education Foundation held its third annual harvest celebration at Bailey's Campground. The evening was great time for everyone and the entertainment was provided by the Time Pilot. So um, look forward to their fourth annual and of course everybody, um, maybe everybody doesn't know, but the Scarborough, Scarborough Education Foundation um, gives grants to teachers who write grant proposals um, for innovative and new things that are outside of the typical school budget. So we've had some really great success with that. Some teachers have gotten 3D printers and document cameras and all kinds of other things. So Scarborough Education Foundation, great uh, thing to invest money in. Um, also on October 23rd and 24th, members of the board participated in a two-day conference at the Bain School Management Association in Augusta. We attended informative sessions ranging from school policy and law, contract negotiations and issues regarding charter schools and funding, um, as well as just general school funding. So um, our student reps, Kristen and Emma, um, attended on Thursday for several sessions, including one entitled Student Representatives on School Boards. 
the ladies actually were doing the presentation. They did an excellent job, great. and um, it was great for them to be able to give feedback to school districts that most of them didn't have representatives on the board, and they were interested in finding out what they should do, and the ladies discussed their elections, um, what they offer to us, which is a great amount of information to us that we wouldn't normally have because we're not in the school every day. So um, it was wonderful, and we appreciate you coming up, ladies. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Um, the board also was at the polls this past Tuesday in an effort to build our email list to better able to communicate with members of the public without children in our school system. Um, the setup was a little odd, so it was really rather um, difficult, I guess, but um, we all manned the table for a number of hours, and um, I think we had a, you know, a, a good number of uh, email sign-ups. Uh, it would have been nicer had we had a spot someplace else, but we were discussing that with um, the clerk and with Guy Gledhill, who runs the election, so hopefully next year they'll have a different setup for us and we can get some more signatures. I'd also like to say that Oak Hill Players is putting on their um, performance of White Christmas, um, tonight is opening night. Unfortunately, we're all here, so we can't attend opening night. Um, the performances are tonight, tomorrow, which is November 7th, Saturday, November 8th, and those are all at 7 p.m. Sunday the 9th is a matinee at 2 p.m., and then we have next Thursday, which is the 13th, Friday the 14th, Saturday the 15th, and then 16th. And the evening performances on Thursday, Friday, Saturday are again 7 p.m., and Sunday at 2 p.m. tickets are for sale at the door. So. And the Patriots have a bye week, so Sunday afternoon <laughs> would be a great time. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for pointing that out, Jackie. I wasn't thinking that. So um, <laughs> anyway, um, get out and support the Oak Hill players. A lot of young, you know, talented individuals participate in that. So, And I know that uh, Jane's son is uh, there, and Kate Bolton, our business finance manager's daughter, is involved in that, so um, I don't think Emma or Kristen you are. So. Okay. No, you don't she say bring cash. So, um, so yes, please plan on and going to see that. The Oak Hill Players always puts on excellent performances. So. And uh, can you say one more thing? Please bring cash or check. You cannot take credit cards. Oh, all right. Cash or check only at the box office. No credit cards accepted. So um, do you know how much it is to get in? Is it $5 or 7 10, oh, it's 12. 12. 12. Oh, for all right, adults. the price has gone up. Sorry. Oh. Okay. For adults and eight for students. Ten for okay. Students. So Ten. bring a little extra cash. Yeah. So, um, All right, and that concludes my report this evening. Christine, may I add something, even though I'm not the chair? Last Saturday, uh, Kauaians and other people, along with, I think there were 12 key club members from Scarborough, oh. packed macaroni and cheese. At a, it's a program that has gone mostly nationwide now. Uh, for We took ten boxes, I think, to uh, the backpack program here and 14 boxes to the Scarborough pantry, food pantry. But I wanted you to know that, that tw I think it was 12 of our key clubbers and their advisor, plus Kiwanians from Scarborough, Sanford, Biddeford Sacco, Standish, along with other key clubbers, were there interacting and having a good time and packing these meals. Great. So, All right. uh, just a shout out that uh, the pan food pantry has told us that there will be 175 families uh, needing Thanksgiving dinners. And I don't remember how many at, at uh, Project Grace. Do you recall? It's different every year. In the last few years, it's been between 80 and 90 mm -hmm. families. So. so there's a need in Scarborough if you wish to contribute to the food pantry or Project Grace or both. Thank you. And that would conclude my report this evening. So I will look down to the ladies there for the students' representatives report, please. So I have for at the middle school, the student and parent-teacher conferences will begin on November 12th. And all the sixth graders wrote letters to veterans to thank them for their service, and they'll be shared on Honor Flights. And you can feel free to go to honorflight.org if you'd like to see more information about that organization and what they do for all of our veterans. 
Um, the middle school will be, par will be participating in the Stuff a Bus fundraiser put on by Rewind 100.9, and all the donations of non-perishable food items will go to the Preble Street Resource Center, and they'll be collecting food through November 21st. Um, and both the middle and high school participated in a mock election. Um, the middle school especially put time into teaching their students about the election process, and surprisingly, both the middle school and high school results were very, very similar. Um, although they didn't always agree with what the actual results were. <laughs> um, the high school had a very, very successful fall sports season so far. Uh, last Saturday alone, we celebrated three state championship wins in field hockey, boys cross country, and girls cross country, um, which makes the count four so far this year, including golf from earlier this season. And both boys and girls soccer finished their seasons last night, ending as the Western Maine Class A runners-up. As already mentioned, the Oak Hill Players have their annual show, and I've seen it um, in the past. It's really good, so I'd really suggest that everybody go out and support them. And my last is our plug for the senior class uh, Red Storm Bolt Road Race. It's a 5K run walk, and everybody is invited to go to active.com and search for the Red Storm Bolt to come support the senior class and Project Grace. When What's is the that? date? November 15th. It's next Saturday. Okay, and... It's active, as in A-C-T-I-V-E, dot com. com. And if you search for the Red Storm Bolt, it should be the first thing that comes up. Red. All right. Um, in the three primary schools, the parent-teacher conferences have begun this week, and they'll continue through next week. Also, like the middle school, the K-2 through schools are participating in the Stuff the Bus food drive to benefit the Preble Street Food Pantry. Um, donations of non-perishable food items can be made at any K through 2 school. Um, also, the primary PTA is holding book fairs in all three buildings this week. So please support early literacy and primary PTA by shopping for books. Uh, Wentworth will be starting the 30, book, the 30 book reading challenge with students this November. They have been asked to be a part of the Bikes for Books program that is sponsored by the Governor William King Lodge number 219. An assembly was held to kick off the 30 book reading challenge on October 31st when reading was promoted by teachers through song, dance, and inspirational videos. Uh, the school is poised to read 2,000 books collectively. Oh, excuse me, 20,000 books mm -hmm. collectively. Also on October 31st was the annual Special Olympics of Southern Maine Bowling Tournament. Seven Wentworth students, among 30 from the district, were present. Um, upon their return from the event, Mrs. Crosby organized a very special welcome in which students from one of the learning communities lined up and created a cheering entrance for the athletes. <laughs> um, after four years in the making, hundreds celebrate the opening of the new Wentworth School on October 18th at the ribbon cutting ceremony, as already mentioned, and the open house following. Uh, during the open house, students and staff gave tours of the new school, pointing out key areas and the school's interactive technology outfitting the classrooms. I'd also like to add that the WGME Spirit Challenge winner will be announced from 6 to 7 a.m. on Friday on Channel 13. <coughs> Tune in and see how Scarborough did. And that concludes the student representative's report tonight. Thank you very much, ladies. Um, now we have 8.0. We have recognitions this evening. And just a couple. Um, I think Emma, uh, and Emma and I received some of the same same notes, and she did a great job presenting. Um, just a, a, a congratulations to the 2014-2015 Honor um, Festival musicians. This is at the middle school. Honor band is Nail Clavert on trombone. George Mitchell, not that George Mitchell, on trumper, <laughs> trumpet, and Alyssa Ostrowski on percussion. Um, in terms of honor chorus, Sam Lufkin and Madeline Shields. So we want to congratulate all of them. And again, I wanted to recognize um, Emma and Kristen for the fabulous job. Um, it was Mrs. Massengill, myself, so it was the superintendent, board chair, and student reps um, presenting to a pretty good, we had a pretty good group. Um, and people had a lot of questions. It can be a little bit intimidating. The MSMA is primarily a gathering of superintendents and uh, uh, school board members uh, and, and other folks who are um, in, in that periphery of servicing those, those groups. And um, multi-levels of uh, seminars. Uh, this one was, uh, as Mrs. Massengill said, 
uh, all about having the value that student reps bring to uh, the service of the board. And, uh, and these two students did an extraordinary job of representing themselves, they're very articulate, um, representing their school and certainly representing the community. Um, uh, we were very proud of them and I, I think that they felt good about their presentation. Felt that that trip up to Augusta was worth it. <laughs> so okay. thanks. And might I also add uh, congratulations to Kristen down at the end for scoring that winning goal um, mm -hmm. at the end of the uh, field hockey game to win the championship. So um, with two yeah. seconds, yes, yeah, with two seconds, seconds left, right? Congratulations, Kristen. I, nice job. <laughs> now that we've embarrassed you, ladies, enough, so um, <laughs> we'll move on from there. Then um, we have 9.0. We have new business. We have the minutes of October 16, 2014. Move approval is printed. Second. Second. Oh. <laughs> Any questions, corrections, omissions? Seeing none, all in favor of approval as presented the minutes of <coughs> October 16, 2014. 7.2. <coughs> Thank you. Next we have 9.2. We have high school co-curricular appointments. And those are um, the stipend contracts for 2014-15 as presented. Okay. Um, June, oh, sorry. The will of the board this evening. Move to approve. Move approval. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, are these, is this it for the high school? Do you know? This is not sure. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, yes. Any questions, comments? Yes. Yeah. Questions? Um, I, I did email Dr. Entwistle earlier, and I'll, I'll, I'll ask again for the clarification on the homework club advisor. Oh, we're only on 9.2. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I thought we were doing it all together. It was printed. No, I, okay. I said 9.2 because we've got something in between 9.2 and 9.4. Sorry. And I'll retract the question until <laughs> the appropriate time. Thank you. Sorry about that. I no, should have no made worries. myself a little more clear. All right. So any questions about 9.2? No. All in favor of approval of 9.2, the high school co-curricular appointments as presented. Seven. Thank you. Um, all right. Now we have 9.3, which is an update on the 2016 Europe trip. I'll turn it over to Dr. Entwistle for an yes. introduction. And uh, we'll ask you to come on up and give us a, an update. Hi, I'm, I'm Steve Transaluto from the Social Studies Department at Scarborough High School and wanted to share with you tonight um, intent to take students abroad for June of 2016. So we're talking 20 months out from uh, where we are today. And as you know, uh, as members of the school board, we've had successful trips um, in prior years uh, with Education First tours uh, based out of Boston. We currently have a trip in place for June of 2015 to Greece, uh, Athens, and the islands. And currently, uh, the status on that trip, which is not in the agenda, we have 26 students um, enrolled there. And we may have even more students enrolling before, uh, before springtime. Last June, we had a very successful trip. We took 28 students to uh, London, Paris, Madrid, and Barcelona. And uh, the majority of them were seniors who have now since gone on to college. But we still have a handful of um, now seniors this year uh, who are still in the high school who um, participated in that trip. And that was just an amazing experience. So we're now moving ahead to 2016. And um, the reason we plan ahead is the price point for student travel just makes it so much more affordable. And since 99% of the students who participate um, in tours with EF tend to finance it monthly. So prior, just prior information for them, they can plan ahead. They basically register and then they um, make monthly payments. So giving them 20 months, uh, 18 to 20 months advance notice just helps everyone to, to kind of plan ahead financially. So we're moving ahead of 2016 and you can see the itinerary that's uh, there before you. Um, and it's a 13-day tour to Berlin, and I won't bore you the whole itinerary, but it's basically through the Swiss Alps into Austria, uh, Czech Republic, uh, Liechtenstein, and then on to, um, to Switzerland, and then ending up in Paris. And EF, um, who I have, this will be my fourth tour with this company, um, incredibly um, 
well-run, extremely professional. They're the nation's oldest tour company in the country. They've been in business for over 55 years, and uh, just my experience with them has been phenomenal. And uh, we're currently hoping to have, uh, for the Greece tour, the same tour director I've worked with the last two trips, who is just a really outstanding woman from Rome. And I'm now looking ahead to 2016 to get her on board to lead this tour again. Uh, and she's actually visited the town of Scarborough. Um, two years ago, she came to visit after uh, meeting my first group of students who uh, traveled abroad and had such a great uh, rapport with them that she was in New York and took the train up to Scarborough to um, spend time at my house in Cape Elizabeth, and we all went out to lunch and reconnect with students. So that's kind of what I think international travel and education is all about, making those kind of international connections with other people. So, um, so not to keep you, but um, what I'm seeking tonight is just confirmation and, and permission to, to continue this uh, travel program. I'll be working with Lincoln McIsaac, who um, I've worked with in the past uh, on these uh, trip planning. I think that Mr. McIsaac was before us last year because you were engaged elsewhere. Exactly, right. Mm -hmm. he, he, he spoke with you last year, and I believe I met, a, met with you two years ago uh, regarding the trip that we uh, just successfully completed to Spain and France and England. Steve, it's also important just to point out that essentially what, what you're seeking from the board is the, is the authorization to be able to recruit students to this, although it is not a school-sponsored um, travel and, 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 and really has nothing to do with expenditure of school resources. I think it's important to know that. Exactly. Just yep. It, uh, students uh, fully finance their, um, their travel experience. Um, the expectation is that it, it is instructional, it is educational. Um, students um, are expected to follow a code of behavior, uh, proper procedure on the tour, um, and just looking at the, you know, the world situation, obviously it's uh, sobering at times when you look at the international news. So I think, uh, in my humble opinion, the students from the past who have participated in these tours from Scarborough have just been outstanding student leaders. Um, and what happens with, the, with EF is they will place us with other student groups from across the country. So the kids get to know other kids from across the U.S. as well as uh, host country national people. And the Scarborough students that I have taken abroad have just been exemplary. They're the ones who kind of assume uh, the leadership roles um, in the tours that we've done. So, um, so students are aware of what their responsibilities are and what they're expected to uh, how they're expected to behave and uh, what their role is on the trip. So I just have one question. Certainly. So this trip will be leaving after school is out for the year. Correct. So you've factored in any kind of weather issues and extensions of school <laughs> that we typically sometimes fall exactly. into. Exactly. And, and looking at the ongoing sports achievement of the high school, um, we've realized um, April vacation can be tough just because of so many sports programs. And then in June, even with finals over, our plan is we, we post uh, after commencement, uh, final exams are over in the, in the high school. And then inevitably, uh, there are state uh, championship games in all the spring sports, track, softball, boys and girls across. Um, and so forth. So we try to time the rough date of departure would be around June 20th of 2016, and the expectation we would be returning around July uh, 3rd, uh, depending on, again, we don't have definitive dates, um, but that's the expectation around departure June 20th. Okay. okay. Jackie, <coughs> yes. Steve, it says here that there's a three-day tour extension. Does that mean that some students would go for 10 days and some would stay on for an extra three. How do we chaperone those, that first group back home? Good question. Uh, we actually, all of the students will be going on the tour. We decided um, to, we kind of took a poll, took the temperature of students who are already interested in doing foreign travel this year for 2016, and we decided to just simply have a 13-day tour. Okay. So that Paris piece is actually mandatory. It's included in the tour. Last year it was like that too with the Barcelona piece that got um, added on. It, right? it was. And we've learned from that experience where we initially had a 10-day trip and then students were saying, let's go on and see Barcelona. Um, so we added that, which went very successfully, but inevitably uh, it made it a little more complicated because um, some people weren't sure. So this trip we decided um, let's simply just plan on 13 days. And I think Paris particularly is a very big draw, especially for French students who, um, who um, want to practice language there. And as you probably know, uh, in the French program, uh, Helen Van Ness has also been in, uh, implementing an um, April 
French immersion program through Education First Tours as well. So she's working with them also. Okay. <coughs> Anything else? Thank you. Oh, Chris. Uh, I'll just add that I actually had this was my first opportunity in high school to travel abroad with this group, and uh, oh. it was fantastic. Changed my life. So it's an excellent opportunity for the kids, and um, I, I like the fact that you give them enough lead time to try and to try and finance it. So I I would have no problem supporting this. I think we had more more programs like this. We need to broaden our cultural base in Scarborough a little bit. I think. Hmm. Great. Thank you. I must say one thing. It's not if for for. Faculty chaperones like myself, um, it's a great opportunity for myself as well. But um, when you return, it's, it's actually kind of exhausting. We come back from these trips, and uh, so it's great for the students. They get a lot out, a lot out of it. Um, I get a lot out of it as well. But uh, I know the last trip that went off very well, very successful. Um, but I, yeah, I spent a day just sort of like decompressing from the uh, 14 days uh, of, of student travel. But I must say, Scarborough, <laughs> Scarborough kids have been outstanding. I, I've had many chaperones from other schools pull me aside and just say, these kids are great. Uh, they've done a phenomenal job. And when you look at the, uh, don't take all your time tonight, but when you look at the college placement of the students that participate in these programs, um, my seniors that went last year, I had 20. Three of them out of 28, I think, were seniors uh, going off to some outstanding um, colleges and universities across the U.S. So I do think it tends to uh, pull in students who um, are already seeking challenges and are already intellectually and academically quite motivated. So, so it's, a, it's a great opportunity for everybody. So thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. We appreciate you coming up. Thank you. I think so. Okay. So um, the will of the board this evening regarding the motion. Yes. Move to approve. Second. Check in. Questions, comments? No. All in favor of approval of the trip that is not necessarily school sponsored but does fall into us anyway? Seven. And I see the ladies down at the end, too. Thank you. All right. Um, now we have 9.4. This was our addition um, there of the Wentworth uh, co curricular appointments. Both approval. Second. Okay. Mr. Chiazzo. Now, now, the, now, now, the, now, 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 now it's the time. Okay, now it's okay. The time. thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, so I guess the same question then. If Dr. Trenches, if you'd take a couple of minutes and just describe again the homework club advisor piece, yep. please. I will. Um, the funds for the homework, homework club um, basically have been shifted out of co-curricular. You know that there have been some reductions in co-curricular. This seemed to fit into the regular instruction line. Um, the goal is, uh, of this program is to support students uh, develop um, appropriate study skills, the, some of the executive skills that are really necessary to navigate school, uh, some problem solving, some, um, some support and motivation in terms of completing homework. Um, and because these goals are in line with core instructional goals, um, and often meet the needs of what we um, have as tr uh, traditionally underserved and, and or at risk and or struggling learners. Um, the decision was made uh, at Wentworth to support the club stipends through the operating budget. Um, it's typically served um, uh, 45 to 40 to 45 students, uh, two advisors, uh, several high school uh, volunteers as well who are, and they are basically earning uh, community service hours while they're supporting their younger peers. Um, I, I um, Mr. Chiazzo and I had a conversation earlier, and I said in some ways um, it, is, it is homework, but it is, it's, and that's a nice name for this club, um, but it is so much more in the same way that we have Jumpstart, which is really so much more than, than fun and play. It, it, it is really um, above and beyond uh, <coughs> what students are um, able to access, and essentially it does uh, supplement what might not be um, uh, provided in terms of those kinds of supports uh, once they leave the school. Okay. Question? Who had a oh, I just Callie. wanted to make a comment that <coughs> for a homework club, I have known um, a few different families whose kids have done it, and it's been transformative for the kids and the families, their whole family dynamic, because they have trouble managing time and struggling with um, figuring out how to do the homework and the whole family gets involved in it and it's an uproar at night. And so homework club, it's all done. So when kids come home, it's just like relaxing, nice family time because they've worked out 
the issues at school with teachers who can help them, because parents don't always know how to help kids do their homework, and it's a different dynamic between a parent and a kid trying to figure some of this stuff out than it is with a teacher and a student. So I think it's uh, it's fantastic, and I'm glad it switched to um, instructional because it, it is. Well, and there's and there's a there's a large number of kids that that. Um, can access this, and 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 it, and it's important for them to to access it. Like I said, um, and and you said as well, um, it it can make a huge difference. We're very fortunate um, this year with the folks that are engaged um, and involved in in this um, undertaking to have some very very strong um, and capable and 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 experienced um, uh, instructional uh, folks who who. who um, who, who can be very successful in, in this role of, of supporting these kids. So. Other, did somebody else have a question down the side? No. Okay. Chris. Uh, yeah, I certainly don't question the need or the appropriateness of it. I guess my concern is more of why it's a stipend as opposed to part of the, why, why does it need to be an extra stipend uh, and not part of the regular curriculum or part of the regular instructional process if, if it's, uh, it seems, it seems to me to be very academically focused, which is wonderful. The need is there. That's clear. Um, I'm more questioning the need for the stipend portion of it. Uh, and it is really, it is, it, it is some supplemental and goes beyond what we can um, typically offer and what falls within the purview of the responsibilities of the teacher. Really, it extends, it extends beyond that. So it is, it is an extension of their responsibility. Um, and that's the reason why it's stipend. The, the other reason, Chris, I think that while we try to do as much of that within the school day, you um, also have a sense uh, with your own kids that the school days are very full and we try to fit in as much of that as possible. There are students, however, that, that continue to not have those needs met and we recognize that with those supplemental supports, they can pick up some skills that will allow them to be much more successful. And, and just to piggyback on that, um, because I, I had similar thoughts to you, and um, I was just curious, is it, is it two, three, four times a week? How, how many nights does it mean? Do we have a sense of that? I, I, I believe it happens f um, four days after school. Okay, so it's but all year, four days after school. Correct. Well, I think it, it probably doesn't get started f until kids get settled into school, um, but it would be, it, but it is throughout the whole school year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. All right. Seeing no one else, other questions? All in favor of approval of the co-curricular appointments as presented for Wentworth? We have six. All opposed? One. Okay. So moved then. Um, committee reports, 10.0. So we will start down at Jackie. Uh, we have, uh, we, we will be meeting soon with the administrators group uh, for contract negotiations. And I anticipate that we will be meeting with the association with regards to custodial contract uh, probably around the first of the year. Okay. Jane, long range planning. Um, we, long range plans, uh, uh, the committee has uh, had a meeting early October and uh, we basically look at a, a lot of information and identify what's our next big direction to go, what's our, you know, most, um, um, what the dire needs is uh, we identify that in the middle school that's overcrowding, so that's uh, the problem we need to address. Uh, we are exploring many several options and the researches, so, but that's what our next big project, we, that's what we're going to focus on. Okay. Jana, teacher evaluation and communication. So um, the, the teacher evaluation committee met this afternoon and um, basically they did some talking around uh, this pilot that they're about to begin in every school. 
um, and there'll be six people, six teachers who have stepped forward to volunteer, kind of to practice the whole new program that is underway for evaluation and professional development. And that's at every grade, le at all um, phases, K-12. So um, that's underway. Our leadership team is being trained in, in the use of Marzano model, and they'll also be working with <coughs> other school districts in the state who are using Marzano, so that they're, they're teaching each other from other school systems of how to do this, and learning from places that have already started the model. And you know, um, there's another layer. There's a steering committee that's just started to develop, and that's going to meet occasionally over the course of the whole year. That's kind of going to be a overseer of the whole system. And um, there is going to be on December 3rd an important conference at USM that's going to be able to talk to uh, educators in the state about the component that is the testing and how, what percentage of that testing should be used in an evaluation of a teacher, the testing results of the students in her class. So what, what's realistic? What would work? What, what makes sense? Um, and so all that will be talked about on, at that conference day. Um, one of the things I thought about um, this afternoon at that meeting was, you know, these people have stepped forward to do this work basically for free. It, it's an enormous amount of work. It's done after school hours and vacations. Um, and so I, I kind of have in the back of my mind about how do we recognize people when we don't give them money for their hours of time? And, and so I was kind of wondering about whether or not that might be something that we might want some of these people to come forward at some point by the end of this year to the board in either a business setting or whatever meeting so that we can just you know, hear from them a little bit, see how it's going, and, and recognize them. Because, you know, often teachers, like, uh, they – they'll get a little note in their box from, from the principal, and that is like the biggest thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and so it just dawned on me being there because I've watched this group work now for over a year. And, um, and the same thing goes for Mrs. Sizemore because of the enormous amount of leadership she is providing to this committee. It's just exceptional work. And we're ahead of the game. I've looked at the papers that have come down from the state in terms of what they're asking school systems to do. Some systems are way behind in this. They, they haven't touched it yet. I, I know because I ask curriculum directors from other places, what are you doing with this? I haven't gotten into that yet. And our district is ahead of the game. We are already beginning to become in compliance with the rulings that are now coming down from the state regarding this legislation. So I think it's great work. And Perfect. As far as communications go, um, our committee has met, and we are talking about a number of things. One would be, you know, an opportunity to be able to um, do a column in in a, a local paper that would provide families with what are some of these topics about education, you know, because for for almost for all of us as well. These are new. These are new endeavors. These are new initiatives, and you know maybe some kind of articles that would be on a regular basis might be a great idea. Uh, we went out to meet the public the other night. Um, we we talk often about how what's our next step to engage the community in in knowledge and understanding about education and where it's going for the 21st century. So. Sorry to be so long. No, no, that's a that's, lot of work. We we want to hear the committee report. Mm -hmm. um, policy committee. So the policy committee, we have um, a, an updated list from Kelly Johnston of what still <coughs> needs to be addressed. Um, we've done the required and recommended. Now these are just the ones that we have. So our plan now is to develop a strategy for plowing through them because before we were kind of like, as things were coming up, we would review the policy, but now we're going to get a wholesale policy um, and go from there to just bang them out. Okay. So that we're going to need some time next week. We have to still firm up the time. But. All right. Uh, the 
business and leadership community. Help me out. <laughs> business and school partners. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Business and school um, partners. We haven't met recently, and I think I talked about it at our last meeting that we've um, broken into two sort of smaller subcommittees mm -hmm. of this larger group. One to sort of look at revitalizing the career fair in a more interactive way and instead of kids showing up and going booth to booth and talking with people to actually get them doing um, different types of jobs and really creating an interactive environment for them to explore opportunities. And then the second group was um, developed to think of new ideas and new things that we could ways we could work with the community and businesses to engage the students. One of them has, one idea that came up was an internship program for students and we looked at that gap sort of um, time frame for seniors where finals have ended, graduation hasn't happened yet and there's not a lot going on. Maybe there's a time there that they can take a week and, and work in the business world or job shadow some, somebody. So the other group is sort of coming up with new ideas. So if any of you have thoughts on that, send them my way. Okay. Chris, finance. Uh, finance met this evening before our meeting. We reviewed first quarter financials. Um, while individual line items may go up and down a little bit, we're pretty much right on par from where we've been the last two or three years. No. No major surprises. Um, the things we've been talking about right along with utilities, things like that, have spiked up a little bit, but we're, we're offsetting those in some other areas. So um, you'll all be receiving the first quarter updates from Kate, uh, hopefully within the next couple of days. Any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we're moving on. All right. Thank you. And I don't think there's anything else. So now we have 11.0. We have a motion. Or I should say, we don't have a motion yet, but um, we are planning on adjourning to executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA Section 405.6D to discuss the custodial contract. We will not be returning to public session. So move. Do I have a second? I have a second. second. All in favor of adjourning, we have seven plus two. So moved. We will not be returning to public session. Okay, I'll pick up some